What's up guys? All right, today we are going to be installing this Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 EFI kit on this 1971 Ford Maverick. Uh, so, um, I did a video on the unboxing and I said I was going to be doing an install, so here it is. First thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remove your uh, thermostat housing. You're going to have to remove the hose, thermostat housing, remove distributor. Um, I'll probably remove the uh, carburetor just to make it easier to remove the bolts on the intake manifold afterwards. Um, and then any uh, vacuum lines or any hoses that are in the way. Um, and then that should be it. Then the new stuff should go on. So let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so we removed the distributor, the carburetor, and the uh, uh, intake manifold. So, you know, we had to take off all the lines, had to take off, you know, the fuel line for it, whatever vacuum lines were on there. Um, and right now I'm just going to clean off any excess gasket that's on there from the old one. And then we can start putting in the new stuff. Oh, before actually, before we do that, we got to set the engine to um, top, dead top dead center, which means the first cylinder, which will be passenger side for this one forward. Um, that one has to be at the highest point on the compression stroke. So we'll set that and then that will be the starting point for the installation. All right, one trick um, that I picked up from the guys over at Auto Resto Mod is they use aluminum foil uh, to lay down in the valley so that you don't get any gunk in there and whatnot when you're cleaning off your, um, your old gasket. Uh, one thing you do have to do, and I'm not sure why this is, um, so all the ports on the heads are rectangular like like this one even this one so i'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut it down here i'm not going to go past this black line i'm going to stay within it but i am going to cut here and here about um looks like it has it on the front and back for some reason not sure why but all right so we just test fitted the intake everything looks pretty good so far um one thing I am going to do is I have an old bolt from the intake manifold, or a stud I should say, threaded stud, and I also have a bolt matching threads that I found. I just cut off the head right, with the uh, cut off wheel, and I'm just going to thread them in a little bit by hand, one on the rear left, one on the front right, so that we can use them as guide pins when we're putting the intake down, uh, so that way our gaskets move as minimal as possible. And that should uh, that should ease the, the installation process a little. All right, one thing you do have to do is use RTV on this front edge and the rear edge because the gasket will only go on the ports. Uh, so you just got to put like a quarter inch thick bead all the way across and you want to make sure you get gasket at the edge where the gasket will be and where you're RTVing. You want to make sure you fill up all the gaps so that there's no leaks. All right, um, you, we also have to put RTV around the ports themselves. So it's going to be, you know, just um, dab a little bit on there and just spread it out. We're going to put it on the actual heads um, around the water jackets. And then we're also going to put it on the uh, intake manifold, do the same thing. Well, we'll probably put it on the gasket itself and then put the intake on. All 
All right, so I um, put the RTV smooth, you know, spread it around the, the ports just with my finger and put the gaskets on and just kind of, pre you know, apply pressure to the gasket to, uh, to let it settle in and settle into the RTV. And now we're going to put more gasket, do the same thing on the actual gasket itself. So what we're going to do is he's going to turn over the engine, I'm just going to stick the screwdriver in the number one spark plug hole and wait for it to get to its highest point. Um, we want it in the compression stroke and I believe we have to look for the, the, um, the lifters there to be moving. If they're not moving, you know what, I'm going to take everything back. I'm not even, I, we'll just have to see how it goes. Okay, so... Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so I remember now. Go back to what I was saying. Both lifters have to be down yes. for it to be the compression stroke when you're cranking over the engine. Because it can be top that center, but is that the one exactly yeah, firing? Yeah, because if you, if you have it and one of the lifters is lifted, um, when you have your number one cylinder all the way at the top, you, um, you'll be either on an intake or an exhaust stroke. So you want to make sure you're on the compression stroke, which means both lifters should be down. Alright, so just finished torquing up the uh, intake manifold bolts there. Um, we did the first sequence, went through it at 10 foot pounds, went through them again at 18, and then the third time at 24. Um, there's a specific pattern you have to follow. Um, the one I used, I found, was listed for a a Ford Racing intake manifold. Um, the instructions for the the um, that comes with the uh, ProFlow 4, it's kind of like a universal um, instruction, so it's not specific to the 4302. It's actually just like a general instruction uh, sheet, but uh, it does say to, to reference um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm looking for it here. It says, um, reference, um, vehicle service manual for pro proper torque specs. So, um, those are the ones I found. So that's what I went with. Um, when I went online, I found, let's see if you could see it there. This is the torque sequence that I followed. So, like I said, I just 10, 18, 24, and I followed the sequence through each time. And so that's uh this is supposed to be i guess the the more complicated difficult part so to speak so that's done um i'm probably gonna leave it off here um for today and i'll come back to it 